Good morning, church. Good morning. We have a few announcements today from our faith community. We're a little bit busy this, this week, which is a great thing. We have our open night mic Friday night at 7 p.m. The doors open for six, at 6 for those who are... 6.30. Six, oh, now it's 6.30 6 for those who are performing. Um, we also have our free community breakfast Sunday morning on the 14th. On April 20th, we have a family game night. And on the same Sunday, the 14th, next week, is Native American Sunday Ministries, where we celebrate the Native American ministries, and we have a special offering. So we will have a, a short slide after at the end of the announcements, and we'll be also having a short slide during the announcements next week. And our liturgist doesn't know it yet, but we'll be reading from the Native American liturgy next week as well for the new, for the, she's smiling because she, she knows who she is. So, um, because it's important to acknowledge our Native Americans, friends and families. So, are there any other, oh, you know how I love to do the business of the works of the church, so. Our admin council meeting is this Tuesday at 6.30. It is hybrid here at the church and via Zoom. Are there any other announcements from our faith community? If not, please rise as the light of Christ is being brought into the church, into the service. It's always in the church. <clears throat> Please be seated as we are blessed by the intro from our choir.
Welcome to Peterborough United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Tom, for those who don't know me and all those online. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join with me in the call to worship found on the screen and in your bulletin. How shall we live together when shadows gather? Drawn to God's unquenchable light, we are also drawn into one another's presence. What was hidden has been revealed. We are woven together with all creation. When we live in the light, as God is in the light, we are one with each other. Let us worship God, who is our light and salvation. Please rise, if you are able, as we sing Love Divine, All Love Excelling, found on page 384 in your hymnal. And on the screen. Now please join in the opening prayer. God of abundance, we are thankful for the beauty all around us. We us together in a life full of goodness and joy. Help us to move in harmony with one another and with all creation, 
Let us travel on your path toward release in your presence. Amen. And now please rise and join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. but they are mighty in voice. Sitting. Okay. School. Why'd you get a new Lego set? Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, that's good enough. School. I heard school. Anybody else? Boy, you guys really need boring lives. <laughs> you guys didn't lose power? So, why did I sit down? You guys are killing me. When I was your age, I was never your age. There we go. <laughs> How often have you heard that? When I was your age. Um, not that often. A lot. A lot. A lot. 
So that's why you won't hear me say that. Why are we talking about what you guys did this week? Why do you think I'm doing that? Do you ever ask me what I do? Sometimes. What do you usually say to me when you, when you see me? What do you say? And then what is it followed up by? How are you? How are you? I say, how are you? And you guys always say, good, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Good's OK. Yeah. But I ask these questions because I want to know more about you, because I genuinely care who you are. And I want to know what's going on in your lives. That's what Jesus is all about. Today, you're going to be learning about a story where they're fishermen, and they're out on their boats, and they're not catching anything. And Jesus, yeah, you know the story. And what, what, what does Jesus tell them? <coughs> yes, yes, so much that their boat almost capsizes. But what happens to the nets? Did the nets rip? No, they can bring the whole catch right into shore. But what happens after that? What does Jesus say? Let us eat. He breaks bread with them, and he has the, he eats the, the fish with them, and bread with them. Then after that, he tells them that they must do what? Yeah. They must go out and do the same with others, and care for others, and be with others. And this is why I started my conversation with you guys. What? Have you done this week and what's going on in your lives? That's how we show how we care about others. When somebody's doing something that they can't quite get done right, it's our responsibility to help them and say, hey, you might want to try this. And if they can't, you might step up and actually put your hands in there and help them. And if somebody's doing something right, then you go, hey, great job, right? And when, yeah. when you don't see somebody for a while, you say, how are you doing? Instead of saying, hey, how are you doing? Say, what's going on in your life? What happened today? What are you doing? When I ask you those questions, how does that make you feel? Um, thought of. Right. And that's all Jesus asks us to do, is make people feel like they're important. Because when they feel important, they know they are loved. And that's what this is all about, is caring <coughs> and loving for each other. And that is the examples that Jesus is setting on that day, on that beach. Helping others, breaking bread with each other, and teaching how to care and love for one another. So when you go to your classroom today, I want you to learn more and more about that. And I know they will, because I know who's teaching you. So OK, can we pray? And we do this so the adults know what you're learning. So if you have any questions other than your teacher, Ms. Susan, you can ask the adults as well, OK? Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you each and every single day for these cherished children, because they are truly your children, Lord. Lord, help us to watch over them and protect them and guide them in the way that you would have us guide them, with your love, with your compassion, and with your understanding, Lord. Help us be the examples you would ask us to be. Let us be their rabbis. Let us be their teachers. And Lord, let them go into class to learn more and more about you through the words, the scriptures, and through each other. I ask this in your holy and blessed name. Amen. Thank you. You can stand now. I'll... Jesus loves you. Oh, my notepad. That is not good. So, time in the service where we are up our joys and our concerns. And the reason why I have my notepad is 
I write down all of our joys and concerns, and I pray over them every single day. So thank you for raising up your joys and your concerns. Are there any? Wow, I didn't even get to say it. Caitlin. <laughs> For those of you who don't learn here, Caitlin's nephew Magnus had a pacemaker surgery and it went well, praise God, and he is home. He's six months old, just so you all know. So praise God. Gracious Lord. Bless us, Lord. Oh, thank you, thank you. Arnie, Arnie one second news. Arnie, he's a great. Uh, well, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Arnie is happy he's here after his pacemaker, but I think we are all happy that Arnie is here. And Arnie, Arnie's only six months old, too. So, <laughs> great. <laughs> Gracious Lord. Hi, oh, yes, I. Pastor Lori has blessed us from afar, even though we always know where you are in her thoughts and prayers. So, gracious Lord. Bless this joy. Any other joys? Oh, Scylla? Um, first of all, uh, on joy, we just had a really nice visit with Bob's youngest son and the two grandsons. Um, they left this morning. It was a very good visit. It was good to see them. surgery and for my ability to stay focused on Christ and not on anxiety. And the second concern is that my daughter gets here safely. She will be driving up from Maryland on Tuesday to be there at Open Door. So so has I'll do the concerns and then the joys if you don't mind. So it has two concerns. One she's having knee surgery on Tuesday, so we pray that the surgery goes well and she focuses on the Lord and not the anxiety. And safe travels for her daughter, who's coming up from Maryland to be with her after the surgery. So, Lord, in your mercy. And then the joy is that Bob's son and grandsons came up and that they are going home, so safe travels for them as well, and the joy that the families are together. So, gracious Lord. Uh, no, no, I, your hand went up, Kelly. So, uh, Lily had her brace consultation, and um, unfortunately, the insurance wants her back to get worse before they will pay for her brace. Um, so, they are going to wait six months, um, but we got to meet the doctor and just have an appointment. Um, and she uh, was very happy to have some alone one on one, well, two on one time. With um, and then uh, Carrie will be going uh, in for some oral procedures for her mouth, having a tooth possibly removed and some caps put in, so she'll be going under for that. So some prayers for her. And then this mom is a little worried because my two oldest are going on a trip to Texas, driving with all girls, and mom's a little worried. <laughs> so, it's a nine-day trip, and they're going to go work at some fair. <laughs> Sounds a little weird. Okay. But it's all girls in this little age, 20-something age group, going on this big trip to Texas. So prayers that they have a safe travel and make good choices. and Safe everything. Nobody says anything. And they come home safe. So Kelly has lifted up a few concerns. Her Lily needs a brace, and they're going to be waiting six months, but they do have a plan, and she got to spend some quality time, so praise God for that. 
her daughter Kelly, Kerry has oral procedures, a tooth being removed and capped as well. And the two eldest daughters are going to Texas. Um, so safe travels, plus not just safe travels, just safety overall, Lord. So Lord, in your mercy. Richard? Do you mind me having a name? Claire. Claire. Richard has lifted up Claire. His great granddaughter had a birthday yesterday. Gracious Lord. Bless this Pat. Um, I'll be having back surgery on Thursday, and I'd like prayers from you all for healing. Pat is having back surgery on Thursday. Prayers are definitely needed as well. Lord, in your mercy. Christine. If you don't mind, I'd like to take a moment just for that prayer. And I'm taking liberty. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we ask you to be with Christine and her whole family as they are. Uh, Mourning the loss of her sister, we ask you to be with Roger as they, he mourns the, his wife, Lord. Lord, there is nothing we humans can say or do to take away this loss, this pain, this anguish. Lord, we can only give it up to you for you. Your love is what fills that void. Your caring. Lord, I ask you to send all your angels to them. Send all the people you can, to love upon them and give them whatever they need. Give them the support they need. And Lord, when they are alone and they think they are alone, let them feel your presence. Let them know that you are always with them, that you were with them from the beginning to the end, and that you will always be with them. Give them the strength and the courage to move on and let them be able to celebrate the life. I ask this in your holy blessed name. Amen. <clears throat> there are times when God puts something on my heart that I cannot say no to. Christine has been a big part of my life lately. She cares for everyone. And when someone is hurting in my life, I need to show how much she means. So later on, everyone else, please wrap your arms around her and let her feel your love. Thank you. Wendy. On the joy side, Andy's birthday is today. You bother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We don't normally do this, but... He's a little bit special. So let us sing happy birthday to Andy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andy. Happy birthday to you. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you. Amen. You had to wait to the last. Terry.
just doesn't seem kind of fair sometimes. So that's my concern. And I have a blessing. Um, our dog had cancer, well, has cancer. And we've been blessed because she had her surgery in December, and they only gave her three to four months to live. But last week's checkup, she's tumor free for the chemo. And she's doing fantastic, so we don't go back for another six weeks. Um, but practice with was really hard for her in the summer. So that was their baby. <laughs> Terry has lifted up our daughter, Ashley, and her husband, Michael, as they had to put Cleopatra, their daughter of eight years, down from a tumor cancer that came on very rapidly. So prayers for Ashley and Michael, and obviously my wife, as you can see. Um, so, Lord, in your mercy. Are there any other joys, concerns? Richard has lifted up the earthquake in Taiwan. Lord, in your mercy. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to request a joy. I want to end with a joy. Is that, I this, have one. Thank you. Um, this week we had a surprise visitor, one of Russell's former football players, who was hiking up in Maine and said, hey, I might come down your way and... It's always kind of a joy, um, just since we don't have kids, to have a player, a former player that feels like we're family to him. So awesome. we have a big football family. We're blessed. Yeah. What, a, what a joy. Justine has lifted up that a surprise visitor, a former player. And praise God for you, Russell, for that, because that it, anybody can be a coach. But for someone to come back like that, it's a special man. So, gracious Lord, Bless us joy. let us go to our Lord in prayer. Precious Lord, provider of all our needs, today many prayers have been lifted up to you, many concerns, Lord, and many joys. Lord, I thank you for all the prayers that have been lifted verbally, Lord. But, Lord, so many prayers have also been lifted in silence, Lord, and online. Lord, hearken to all those prayers. Answer them in the way that you see fit. Because, Lord, sometimes what we want is not necessarily what we need. Lord, that your will be done so that we may have the peace that only you can give. Lord, I ask you to be with all those men in the armed forces, men and women in the armed forces here and abroad. Watch over them, protect them, keep them safe as they keep us safe, Lord. I ask you to be with all those in the front lines, the firefighters, the police officers, the EMTs, the doctors, the surgeons, all those who have answered the call to serve and protect your people. Protect them. Give them the wisdom to heal in the hearts to care. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we say, Amen. Please join with me in a hymn that doesn't get sung that often, and I'm glad that we decided to sing it. Let There Be Peace on Earth, found on page 431 in your hymnal and on the screen.
be seated. Our first scripture is found in the book of in the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 32 through 35 and you can follow along in your pew bibles on page 114 in the New Testament or on the screens. In this passage St. Luke is describing the very earliest Christians just days after the birth of the early church. Listen for the word. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. And now is the time in the service for our offering, if the ushers would come forward. We have a short video to preface Native American Sunday. And Jim will be playing for us as it's being shown. It's a very short video. (laughs) Only about a minute long. Please rise for the doxology. may be seated. And now if you'll join me in the prayer of dedication. Generous God, as we gather to offer our tithes and offerings, we are reminded of the words of the Apostle John about the word of life. Just as your word brings light into our lives, may our giving be an act of generosity a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. 
We thank you for the forgiveness and grace offered through your Son, Jesus Christ. As we give, may we also steward these gifts wisely for the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second reading today is found in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. And you can follow along on page 108 of the New Testament. Listen for the word. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, let me be your vessel. Let your words be heard. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So we heard this story today, and I guarantee you the only thing anybody heard was one thing. What do you hear the story of today? What was the story? Oh, who said that? Doubting Thomas, right? That's all he heard, right? The story was all about Doubting Thomas, right? Right? It's about believing in you when you don't see it. Yeah, something. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Everybody seems to happen. And I'm not just blaming you all because it happens to all of us. This story focuses on doubting Thomas, but there's a lot happening in this thing that people are missing so much. And if, 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 we, if we, wow, we're turning this into a, just a good old talking. This is fine. What'd you say? They're hiding fear. They're hiding fear. Wow, Kyle, does, does this turn into something we were talking about yesterday? Um, The Lord works mightily wherever you may be. Yesterday we were talking, and it's amazing how people want to hear the word of God in different ways. And people do not want to be preached to from a box anymore. And I'm like, well, I don't speak behind a box. So that, that gets me out of it completely. And then I thought about it. I'm like, well, no, I still preach at you. I still talk at you. We don't have dialogue. And now all of a sudden I ask a certain couple of questions and we start a dialogue. This is what we heard from what I think they call the millenniums. That's how they want this now. They want to be in dialogue. They want to debate. They want to have conversations. But we old people don't want that. 
I put myself in the old people, just so you know, because I agreed with the people who were saying the Zoom doesn't work. But it has its purpose. Because it's meaningful for people to have conversations about Scripture. When you hear the Scripture. But it's also meaningful to hear from someone else what it means to them. So as we move forward in my process, in my journey with you all, we're going to morph to a little bit more of this conversational piece of learning together. But not today. Because that's not how I formed my sermon. But I guarantee you, if you have questions, ask. Because I am more than willing to answer them. Because I do not want to focus on the doubting Thomas. Because that's so mundane. You hear it all the time. Kyle and I also had that conversation. Kyle, it's not up there. Somebody please tell me what my sermon title is. Come to believe. Right? Trust me, I know what my sermon title is. I've known it for a little while now. I think Wendy can attest to that. I've known it for a little while now. What does it mean to come to believe? We focused on Thomas so much, we forget to understand what's happening throughout this story. Where are the disciples at this time? Are they out in the streets proclaiming what has happened? No, they're behind locked doors. The first time I'll give it to them, it's the night of the resurrection. I'll give it to them. They're still afraid because, hello, anyone who's saying they know Jesus is going to get killed. I'm giving it to them. They don't know. They still in doubt that it has even happened, that he's even risen. Even though Mary Magdalene went and said, he has risen, I'm telling you, it's true. They still doubt. And it isn't until Jesus walks through the door and says what? Peace be with you. For I don't know about you, if somebody I knew died upon a cross, walked through a door and said, hello, I think I'd be flipping out. So the first thing he says is, peace be with you. But there is many things happening in that time. It isn't just to bring them peace. It's words of forgiveness because what happened during that time before the cross? He was betrayed. All the disciples ran away, and the disciples that were with him, he asked the gods, please let them be free so they could be alone. There was only a few. And what happened when the disciples came to the tomb? One believed, one was ee. They were still in doubt. But even though they were in doubt, peace be with you. I forgive you even though you don't doubt. But now I am here. And as the Father has sent me, I shall send you. You have come to believe because you have seen me. And I am breathing the breath of God on of you. He has breathed his spirit upon them. And he has sent them. He has told them. This is the commissioning that we hear in Matthew. And it's a week later, folks, a week later, that Thomas is in the room with them and Jesus appears once again. And what does he say again? Peace be with you. For they, have they gone out into the world and preached the word? Where are they once again? Behind locked doors. For fear of being killed. I'm sorry, I still give them credit. I'm sorry. I'd probably be behind locked doors too. Just saying. And what does Jesus say? Once again, forgiveness. And what does Thomas do? Does he have to put his hands in the holes? Does he have to do that? No. Jesus is just saying, look, here. And what does he say? My Lord and my God. Immediately he believes. Without question. That is the point of this whole story. It isn't the doubting I want you to understand. 
Because people, if you don't doubt sometime in your life your faith, you're not human. I can tell you that. I'm a pastor, and I know I've doubted my faith more than once. I have not doubted my God. Hear me. I have never doubted my God. I've doubted my faith. There's a difference. It's okay. Because peace be with you. But when you come to believe in your Lord and your Savior and your God, he has asking you to do one thing. Go, as my Father has sent you. Make others come to believe. Go, find those people, just as I said to these children this afternoon, this morning. We are commissioned to do one thing. Have people come to believe in who God is and what he has done through his son, Jesus Christ. Because Christ the Lord has risen. risen It's amazing how last week was Easter and it is a distant memory. I said that to my wife this morning. It's hard to believe that Easter was last (coughs) Sunday. How many people really remember that Easter was last Sunday? You really had to think about it. It it has become a thing of the past. Even yesterday, when the bishop said, Christ is risen, there was a quick little hesitation. And then everybody, oh, Christ is risen indeed. Because it has happened. We all are in that space. We are part of the risen Christ. We are not part of that other part of Christ. We are the risen Christ. And we need to tell the world about it. Just as he's breathed his breath his spirit on the disciples of that time, we are the disciples of this time. Come to believe through what I do, through what I say, through my actions. For I know who my God is. And I can tell you, I have stumbled and I am fallen. And my God has forgiven me each and every single time. And he has bolstered me more and more. And I'm not saying these words. I'm saying these are the words that you can tell to other people. And I'm not saying you pick up a Bible and you read scripture to someone. For people who do not know God and do not know Jesus, they don't care about the scripture. They care about who you are and what you do. And the deeds you show. And once you start showing the deeds and the actions, they say, why are you doing this? Then you bring out the Bible and the scripture. And you say, this is what I follow. The words of God that Jesus knew so well that he is my example that I follow. Yes, you can be that doubting Thomas in that little snippet of that story. And you can focus on that if you want. But I'm asking you, I'm pleading you, forget that doubting Thomas part. Remember the part of going. As my Father has sent me, I am sending you and I am giving you the breath and the spirit. Do not be afraid. My peace is with you. Come and believe. We don't have to see. We've been given the gift. Give that gift to others. As we've been asked to do so many times. I've been told over and over again that I've always preached one thing, and it's about being in service to others. Guilty. Guilty. If I'm guilty of telling you to be in service of others, I'll take that guilt, I'll take that shame, I'll take whatever you want. Because on Thursday night of last week, we were told to do that. To be servants to all. That is our mission. To make others believe through what we do and what we say. We are a blessed people. So blessed that we get to have communion today. That we get to remember our risen Lord and what he did for us. So today, as you come to the table, come 
to believe again. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for forgiving us for when we doubt, for we are only human. But Lord, we thank you for bolstering us and giving us the power and the strength when we forgive us and help us to strengthen our faith even more. Help us to truly bring others to believe in you so that they may come to believe as we do. We ask this in your holy and blessed name. Amen. I know it seems difficult for some of us that we follow the litany of communion on page 13 through 15 in your hymnal and hopefully on the screen. But for some of us, this is what gives us comfort. This is how we take in our God. The table is here for everyone. So we must try to be for everyone. I follow this to a point, but I also go away because I know there are others who like a little bit more of a freestyle. If you want a freestyle, I will tell you, you need to start coming to the leadership seminars that we have. I can't remember the hymn that it was sung to yesterday, but we did a litany that I've never, ever, ever ever done in my life. And it was a sung litany. And we were blessed because Laurie Savick, Reverend Taysan, and the bishop sang the litany and we did a response. It was an amazing thing. So communion can be done in many different ways. You must know who you're doing it for and who you are doing it with because we are doing it together. This is not something that is set apart for anyone. We're doing it as a family, together, in union. The table is open to everyone. There's only two things that are necessary. You must believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. And they ask you to come to the table with a clean heart. So at this moment, I ask you to lift up your confessions to your Lord in silence for whatever may be holding you back from God. Take this moment to confess whatever it may be to your Lord. Jesus died upon that cross so long ago to take away the sins of the world, including ours. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Yesterday, we showed each other the sign of peace, but before we did, it was explained to us that it is one way you can shake hands, you can hug but it's very important to just show each other the expression of Christ's peace and love for each other. So please stand and show the, the love and the peace of Christ to one another.
breaking all the rules. I don't care. Spirit of the Lord is working mightily. Maybe not in all you, but he's definitely working mightily in me. Amen. I can honestly say this is the first time in my life I've given the peace of Christ to everyone in the church. First time ever. I've always gone around like everywhere you all did. How many here gave the peace of Christ to everyone? You don't. It just doesn't work out that way. Praise God for the many blessings we have in our lives. And you know what? I am going to follow this, but I guarantee you when it comes time for my time, hold on. <laughs> Truly, hold on. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give our thanks to our Lord and God. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all your heaven, all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covering by water and the Spirit. And on that wonderful night, when he was with his disciples celebrating the wonderfulness of God and celebrating what has happened, the graciousness that God had for his people through Passover, the hymns that were being sung, the celebration, being with his friends and his family, knowing what was to come, he still <coughs> was <coughs> celebrating with them. But he knew the greatest gift of all. He knew that in his death, <coughs> there would be life eternal for everyone. Even though he knew he would be betrayed on that night, he forgave that person. For he knew when he died upon that cross, that horrible death, he was forgiving the whole world. For he knew his death and what it meant for all of us. On that night, in that garden, when he asked that the cup be taken from him. But he said, but Father, not your, my will, but your will be done. For he knew what was necessary. He knew what he needed to do. And from that point on, when he was arrested in that garden. He never uttered a word against it once more. It's 
through the humiliation, through the pain, through the suffering. Not once did he utter a word against it. Even while he was on the cross, what did he utter? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is why we have the communion today. To remember what he has done for us. To truly partake of the body and blood of Christ. To truly partake of his spirit. To let it wash upon us so that we may take it in to have his spirit so that we may truly come to the table with everything that we have and leave it at the table so that we may be pure once more and have his spirit fall upon us so that we may be filled with all the love and compassion necessary to go out into this world. And on that night with his disciples, he took the bread he gave thanks to his Lord and his Father. And he said to his disciples, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body, broken and bruised for you and for the many. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after when the supper was over, once again he took the cup, gave praise and thanks to his Father, Abba. He said to his disciples, take, drink. This is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you meet in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour your Holy Spirit out on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By his spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with his Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of Christ, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The table has been set. We have our gluten-free bread. For those who need it, please come at the end. We do it by intention. We will do... Before we begin, choir... <laughs> body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ, salvation given for you.
table is set. Please come forward.
Our third hymn is Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, found on page 2171 in the Faith We Sing and on the screen. We will be singing verses 1 and 4. <clears throat> Please rise as you are able. Faith. <clears throat> One and four. Gracious Lord, we thank you for every blessing that we are given, Lord. We thank you each and every single day. As we depart from these doors, Lord, let us truly come to believe and bring others to believe once more. Help us to truly remember what has happened on that Easter morn for your Son has risen indeed. In whose name we say, Amen. Amen. We need to practice him. <laughs>